my lapel mic just arrived yesterday so I will now start filming my selling guide series where I'll be talking about how to start your own sticker shop, how to sell on Shopee and Etsy, how to ship internationally and domestically through the different couriers here in the Philippines, and how I make my stickers and more. But in this video, I'll focus about the how to start your own sticker shop. And it is currently 5 o'clock in the morning, so good morning! There are 5 things you need to consider before starting your sticker shop. First is your art. Second is your branding. Third is your platform. Fourth is your finances and materials. And fifth is your process. The first thing you have to do is make your designs. If you can create digital art, that's good. If you are more comfortable with the traditional art, it is also good. You can just scan it and make it a digital one. If you think that you are not that good in drawing or you are not confident with your art, you can do calligraphy, quotes, motivational stickers, and such. For me, I am not that confident in drawing people, which is why most of my artworks are mostly foods. Here are some time lapses of how I made the Guditama stickers. One thing I can say about digital art is, layer is everything! I think every digital artist can relate on this, but there are times that there is this one dot on my drawing and I spend more time finding out which layer that one dot is in. Moving on to our next thing, you also need to consider your branding. Branding is not just the name and the logo of your shop, but rather what you want your customers to feel and to experience while purchasing in your shop. Your product leaves an impression on your customers long after you've made the sale. It is reflected in everything from your customer service style, marketing, and even your business cards and freebies. With the number of sticker shops existing right now, you need to develop a memorable brand that will set you apart from others. Also, branding is like what people say about you when you're not in the room. Think of something you bought that made you really, really excited. For me, it is the Luca Love Six Ring Binder. I even bragged to my sister about it, saying that it's like the Gucci of stationery. This is because I think highly of that brand and all I have is good connotations about them. The next thing you need to consider is your platform. The most common social media sites for sticker shops are Instagram, Etsy, Shopee, and Shopify. I personally use Twitter and Instagram for postings because these are where I am most familiar with. I think most of you already know how things get done on social media sites, so the only tip I can give you is take advantage of the hashtags on Instagram so your posts will appear on people's recommendations even though they are not following you. I also use Shopee and Etsy for listings. Shopee for the orders in the Philippines, while Etsy for international orders. 
I like the ordering system in both sites because they are user friendly and I will talk more about Shopee and Etsy on my next video so please look forward to that. The next thing you must know are the needed materials. First is your drawing device. If you want to draw digitally, it is nice to invest in a good tablet or even iPad. Wacom is also good, it depends on your preference, but I see most sticker shop owners are using the iPad and Procreate combo. But for me, I think it is unpractical to spend a lot of money, especially that you are starting a business. But again, it depends on your preference and budget. I use the Samsung Galaxy Tab A2018 with S Pen and it is really good since I just use it for drawing and sometimes Netflix. I also use the Ibis Paint X for drawing. I bought my tablet at the Facebook marketplace for 10,000 pesos and there are a lot more even affordable tablets and I think the price of Wacom Pen tablets starts at 2,500 pesos. Second is your printer. I cannot recommend a specific brand and model of printer because I am not knowledgeable enough about the different kinds of printers but we have been using Epson printers for a while now and so far so good. In my past video, I used Epson L120 but now I am using Epson L5190. My mom bought this Epson L5190 from Lazada for more or less 13,000 pesos. There is also a lot of affordable Epson printer and the price starts at 3,000 pesos but I suggest you make your own research first before buying a printer. Third is your cutter or scissors. There are two types of sticker cuts, kiss cut and die cut. I also refer them as sticker sheet and sticker flakes. For the kiss cut stickers, cutters like Cameo, Precut, and Brothers can be used, while you can use a pair of scissors or a cutter as well for the die cut stickers. But cutters are a bit pricey so I did not actually buy one. But I still think that buying a cutting machine is a good investment because it can be used in cutting not just stickers but different kinds of paper as well. I am not sure with the prices of cutting machines but I think they range from 12,000 pesos and above. The fourth material is sticker paper. There are different variations of sticker papers in terms of size, texture, and thickness. So it depends on you what kind of sticker paper you would prefer. Now I am using A4 Glossy 105 GSM sticker papers, but when I was still starting, I bought different kinds of sticker papers for like 10 pieces per variation to test out what's the best one. Shopee is where I buy sticker papers and I will link down below the sticker papers I recommend. The fifth one is a photo top. This is optional but if you want your stickers to be waterproof, scratch proof, and weatherproof, you should apply a photo top on it. There are also different variations of photo top like glitter, matte, satin, glossy, and more. I will post another video on how I make stickers so you'll see how to apply this photo top. The sixth one is this laminator. 
This is also optional but if you will put a photo top on your sticker, this will be useful. The laminator I use is this Quaff 320A because it is a hot and cold laminator. It can also be pricey but there is another way to put a photo top without spending on a laminator which I will also show you in the how I make stickers video. Lastly are the packaging materials. Envelope is a must if you will ship through the post office. Make sure you also have a stiff backing card so the stickers would not be bent along the way. You can also include a thank you card or a business card. As for me, these are my packaging materials. Envelopes, plastic pouches with backing cards, thank you stickers, do not bend stickers, you have a happy mail stickers, I also use parchment paper, yarn, I also put wax stamp depending on my kasipagan, I also include a loyalty card with a loyalty stickers, and some freebies. You may be tempted to buy these rigid mailers and cute plastic pouches from Amazon, AliExpress or Alibaba as seen from the other shop owners but if you're from the Philippines, my tip is to use the resources you have around before you send things all across the country to save time and money. Most if not all of the materials that I have mentioned can actually be bought from your local school and office supply store. You can also buy from Shopee if you don't want to get out of your house because almost everything is in Shopee now. Now, if you don't want to buy all these materials, there is another way to make your stickers. As I have said on my past video, I availed the service of Media Prints to make my sticker sheets. They are a printing shop based in Manila and you can also message them on Facebook for orders. Their A4 stickers are only 50 pesos and that already has a photo top and you can choose whether you want your stickers to be matte or glossy. That A4 sticker can be cut into 2 or even 4 to make more sticker sheets. It will only cost you 25 pesos per A5 sheet and 12 pesos and 50 cents per A6 sheet. Take note that they have a minimum of 10 A4 sheets per order. I will link their Facebook page in the description so make sure to check them out. Now that you have your stickers, branding, and social media handles, the last thing you need to have is a process. From ordering, paying, to shipping, you must plan it all out. Think of where your customers can buy. As for me, it is Shopee and Etsy. But if they don't want the couriers of Shopee, they can directly order from our Twitter. We just provide them an order form and we send our details where they can pay. For the payment, Shopee and Etsy has a seller wallet and you can have it transferred to your bank account. We also accept payments through Gcash and BPI if they are ordering directly from our Twitter. For the shipping, Shopee has a partner courier which is JNT, Ninjaban, Xpost and more, while in Etsy you have to mail it through post office. But if you're selling from Twitter and Instagram, I prefer Philpost, JRS, and JNT as the courier. In this selling guide series, I will also upload a video where I will talk more about Shopee and Etsy, so comment down what you want to know about it, so I can answer it on the next video.
that's it. These are what works for me and it would really be great if it also works for you. I am hoping for the success of your shop and it would be nice if you will also share your ideas in the comment section. See you on the next video!